Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here because today we're continuing work on our katana and in particular the habaki of the katana. Now, I have no idea what it is that I'm doing. I started on this yesterday. It was a whole muddle of failure mixed with success and mostly failure. I have some fixing to do of this, so it's a very good idea. A very, very good thing indeed. The Audible is sponsoring today's episode. So I'm going to be going onto their app right here. I'm going to be plugging in an audio book. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, there is a link in the description. You can get a 30-day free trial and a free audio book if you go to audible.com forward slash forge. Thank you Audible for sponsoring us. You make my commute to the workshop very enjoyable and you're going to help as we fix this katana. So let's get on with that. Ugly Dokly, so this habaki fits up the tang. It fits to where it's gonna be. Now, the issue is, is that it is very proud down here on that side, and in fact, needs to be trimmed down to the inside line of that Sharpie line, I believe, for this to look good. Now, I'm very worried about doing this because of the fact that my terrible soldering yesterday, I mean, really terrible soldering. <laughs> <laughs> that did not work. I don't know how far down that solder goes. I don't know how strong it's going to be. And so I'm pretty sure that once I grind this down and file this down to the size that it's going to be, I might well need to resolder it, which would be a shame. But it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, <laughs> what is the part? <laughs> It's gonna be a shame to resolder it. Anyway, I'm gonna go into the grinding room. We're gonna grind that down a little bit. We're also gonna shape that a touch and uh, maybe we'll have to do some more soldering. Well, I think it is fair to say that I am rather thrilled with how this is going. How did the solder hold up? Well, I actually went in there with a jeweler's saw to just open up a little bit there. It wasn't soldered, but it needed opening up so that that'll fit just onto the blade edge. There's a little gap right there, but the rest of it, shockingly, surprisingly, and amazingly, is soldered. The spacer does not look super clean, but this habaki, I am completely thrilled and completely shocked that I was able to pull that out of a piece of 16 millimeter round bar. And all it needs now is some final tweaking and polishing from 120 grit up. And so it's back into the grinding room for a little more of that. I am completely shocked that I have been able to create this habaki. Holy moly, I'm, I can't believe it. I can't believe how beautiful it looks. I can't believe that, you know, not, not the most amazing soldering work ever, but that I've got it soldered all the way back up there. I'm completely shocked, so happy, and I'm excited because we are now going to move on to making the guard. <laughs> So I've just put a piece of inch and a half round wrought iron in the fire. Now you've heard me talk about wrought iron a few times and I get that you might be curious about what exactly wrought iron is. Well, before it was possible to easily make steel, they had to rely on wrought iron. So they would make a bloom from iron ore. That bloom would be made, you know, with charcoal to make it also. And you'd end up with a bloom of iron with a load of impurities. And in order to get rid of the impurities, you'd forge it out, you'd fold it over, you'd forge it out, fold it, forge it, fold it, forge it, fold it, eventually refining it and getting rid of the impurities, which is great, but you don't have any carbon in there. So it means you don't have a particularly <laughs> strong material which then, of course, led the way for the necessity of having steel. Now, why are you going to work wrought iron, Alec? Well, similarly to when we make Damascus steel, because of the nature of the way that wrought iron is made, being folded and worked and folded and worked, 
and the impurities within it. You end up with an almost grain-like finish. You can see a little bit of texture in there that you don't see in normal homogenous pieces of steel. It looks ever so slightly like a piece of wood. Let's go for another heat. It's really a fascinating material because from bar to bar, you're gonna get very different looks in the finished piece. You'll sometimes see it come through very bold, that kind of grain-like pattern. It'll sometimes come through very subtly. It depends on where it was made, how it was made, etc., etc. There is almost no wrought iron uh, produced in the world today. And so the other fabulous thing about it is the rarity of it. Here in the UK, getting wrought iron is pretty easy. However, in places like in the States, very difficult to come by real wrought iron just purely because of how new the country is and how little wrought iron was used in the development of it. Here, I got this from a scrap yard just down the road. We have finished milling what it is that we can mill. I'll show you that in just a sec. Let me get that out of the vise. It doesn't look like much. It doesn't look like a full tang hole. That's because it only goes uh, less than two thirds of the way down the actual width of the tang. As you can see, the tang is extremely narrow on the very, uh, very edge of the tang there. And so, of course, we're gonna have to resort to filing to get this to where it needs to be. So it's filing time. <laughs> As I've been working on this, I've been putting the blue dicom on so that I can then stick this into the hole. That then transfers the blue dicom. You can get your blue dicom shirt at alexsteelshop.com. That transfers the blue dicom onto the hole and tells me exactly where we have contact. So it tells me where it is that I need to remove material to get this to come up. I have a scribe line that's about four millimeters away from where it needs to be. So I know that once I hit that scribe line, that's good. I'm gonna go a little bit further. And then this should mean that once it's all assembled, we've got a nice tight fit with the guard, with the habaki, and with the handle. Still got some more work to do. <laughs> Thank you. 
So we have ground this. We ground our circle and we have ground some beautiful little undulations in there using the small wheel attachment. I am very thrilled with how this is looking. Now this is wrought iron. There are a couple of different things you can do with wrought iron. You can etch it, you can, I've heard, I, as far as I understand, flame etch it. We're gonna give that a try. I've tried it in the forge before and I didn't get the result that I want. We're gonna try it with a torch and worst comes to worst, it blackens it and gives it the beautiful scale black finish. Best comes to best, it oxidizes away the different layers respectively to a different extent and gives us a little bit of the insight to the pattern of the wrought iron itself. So we're gonna do that with the torch. Let's give it a go. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching today's episode. I'd like to again thank today's sponsor, which is Audible. It's an audio book platform that is truly fantastic. It's got an app that goes on your phone. And of course, there's a link in the description where you can get a 30 day free trial and a free audio book. Why do I love Audible so, so much? Well, it's because every single day when I come to the workshop, Audible is thrown on. I'm listening to audiobooks, absorbing knowledge, enjoying myself as I listen to the narrative of a fiction book, all the fascinating insights of, of course, a non-fiction book. I love learning, I love learning more, and it's wonderful. You're driving in your car to and from work, commuting audibles with you. You're here in the workshop today of all days with all the hand filing, the fitting, all of that, holy moly, having audiobooks in my ears has made today 10 times more pleasant. And I hope that for your next commute and for your next day of work, you can enjoy it even more. Learn while you're on the go with Audible. Of course, there's a link in the description below where you can get yourself a 30 day free trial and a free audiobook. Audible.com forward slash forge. Make sure you click that link. Make sure you sign up. Wonderful way to support the channel. Thank you, Audible, and thank you guys for watching.